Music Connection, Connecticut's original music forum. This time on Music Connection, up close with Hilly Michaels. Hi, I'm Victor Serino from Musicians Monthly Magazine. We're here tonight at Music Connection to spend a little time with Warner Brothers recording artist Hilly Michaels. Well, Victor, uh, I'm going to try to capsulize 28 years of, uh, of um, being a musician in, in, in one minute. I'm going to try it anyways. Uh, when I was 13, I, I picked up the drums and um, uh, started playing with Michael Bolton. Michael, <laughs> <laughs> Michael is from the area, and uh, we went out to California. Uh, this was with uh, Michael Bolton and his brother Orrin and a couple of other local guys uh, from this town. And uh, I ended up doing a lot of, uh, lot of uh, recording uh, as a drummer, and uh, I started getting a nice reputation out there. After uh, spending a couple of years out there doing this and that and Pat Boone and Christian rock albums, I moved back to New York City uh, during the uh, early 70s and uh, I met up with this uh, woman, uh, Cherry Vanilla. She was an Andy Warhol superstar. Bright red hair, fascinating person, very talented as well. And uh, after meeting her, I just ran into all kinds of crazy people. Lots of uh, interesting people in New York, uh, including Mick Ronson, who unfortunately uh, passed away. And it's a, it's a great loss for us all. Anybody who knows, uh, who's familiar with David Bowie, The Spiders from Mars, Mick Ronson was uh, the guitar player for David. And uh, he was also one of my dearest friends. And I was uh, playing with Mick for a while and doing lots of uh, sessions in New York with uh, John Cougar, uh, Ellen Foley, and Dan Hartman, and... Martha Hooper with Ian Hunter, and Rolling Stones guitarist Ronnie Wood. Here I am faithful, Ellen Foley, and Cindy Lauper. <laughs> <laughs> if I get stuck, whip me. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so uh, capsulize my career. Very quickly, uh, uh, when I was 13, I, I picked up the drums and um, uh, started playing with Michael Bolton. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I said Michael Bolton, you should jump. You should say about Yeah, every there. time you forget something, have somebody off stage, off camera. I'll come with out. You. Come on. <laughs> if I get stuck, whip me. <laughs> there we go. Now we're getting on some like Madonna uh, 90s shit. I'm sorry, once again. Uh, are we almost done? I'm kind of, uh, if we could turn on the air conditioner, it's a little bit hot. Can we turn on the air conditioner? Somewhere back in the, uh, in the early 80s, I signed a, uh, a recording uh, contract with Warner Brothers uh, for a couple of albums. And uh, having just recently returned from uh, Europe, uh, I was touring with this uh, fellow, Dan Hartman, and I brought back all these comic books from, uh, from Germany, full of Mickey Mouse and Goofy and all that kind of stuff. Having completed my first record, for Warners it was time to do the video. I thought it would be nice to, uh, to come across as a uh, uh, kind of like a half human, half cartoon kind of figure. A new, a new, a new, a new artist uh, would normally get about thirty to forty thousand dollars to shoot a video. So it was my job to talk the record company, Warner Brothers, into doing a full animated uh, uh, video of the song. And uh, it's a very lengthy process, and it involves taking, uh, uh, shooting uh, the subject with a motor-driven camera, cutting out each frame, and putting it against the background, and cameras suspended from the ceiling. Ralph Bakshi did Lord of the Rings, and I wanted that kind of animation, but it's something like a million dollars a minute. So I had to settle for uh, something uh, called uh, pixelation and uh, some other kind of weird film process. I don't know too much about that stuff, but I knew what I wanted, and uh, I wanted an animated video doing Calling All Girls, and what we're about to see is um, the result of about six weeks of work. Maestro. I got lots of money, I got lots of time Bought myself a penthouse, filled it up with bubbly wine
Liza Minnelli was uh, my manager's uh, sister-in-law. My manager is Jake Hooker, and uh, he was married to Lorna Luff. Th those who don't know who Lorna Luft is, uh, you all remember uh, Judy Garland, Wizard of Oz? Well, Ju Judy had uh, two daughters and a son, Lorna, Liza, and Jimmy. And uh, for the song, one of my songs on the album, I wanted... Uh, I had, a, I had written a part that required uh, somebody to sing the national anthem, but I changed the words. And originally I wanted Ethel Merman, and she was supposed to say, And the rocket's great flare, when he dreamed I was there, gave proof through the night that his chances were good. Ethel couldn't do it, so my manager called up his sister-in-law, Liza, and she was more than happy to come down to the studio and put on her 100% her Liza voice, and uh, I'm sure you'll be able to pick her out. She's the only girl on there. <laughs> also in this video, uh, just uh, a bit of trivia, the, the jukebox that you're going to see is the largest jukebox in the world, oh boy. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm sitting up in the jukebox and there's smoke pouring in my face, and uh, I think the second verse, if you watch carefully, uh, you'll see me choke <laughs> on all this wonderful smoke. Now, Shake It and Dance does, doesn't have any animation in it. Uh, however, we had to construct a two pair of shoes, a men's pair and a women's pair of shoes, and the men's pair of shoes uh, tried to catch the women's pair of shoes parading uh, uh, through uh, uh, San Francisco. Now the shoes were about 15 feet long 
and they were made out of uh, foam rubber and there was some aluminum bars in there and men would jump inside these shoes and lift them and run and uh, it was it was kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of very crazy as 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 you'll see and uh, the song is uh, pretty self-explanatory she shakes it and she dances <laughs> the band you hear the music and let go of my hand you know you're driving me crazy well baby you can't sit still Yes, this next video was, uh, was recorded live in Miami uh, about two and a half years ago. And it was recorded at uh, Ronnie Wood's club in Miami called Woody's. Now, we have one in, in New York. He has, uh, he has a couple. Anyways, uh, uh, in this video, it's, uh, it was two nights, and uh, Ronnie Wood was playing guitar. And for you music buffs, I don't know if you remember Harvey Mandel, a great uh, blues guitar player. He was playing guitar, and uh, Jerry Jamont, uh, the very famous uh, Motown bassist, was uh, joining us, and uh, Bobby Keys from the Stones was playing saxophone. Now, I was with a group down in Jamaica, and uh, I got a phone call from uh, Ronnie Wood's management asking me to uh, fly to Miami and do a very impromptu jam with Don Covey. And Don wrote some uh, incredible songs like uh, uh, Sookie, Sookie, Sue, uh, Chain of Fools, Have Mercy, and he was our, our singer for that night. And uh, I was very honored to, uh, and very excited uh, to do this. So, yeah, I had met uh, Ronnie and uh, the other Stones uh, during the 80s when I was recording an album with Marianne Faithful in New York City. And we would be finishing up, and uh, the Stones would be walking in, so we would you know, be hanging out, and we, they'd play us theirs, we'd play them what we had been doing, and uh, that's how uh, uh, the following video uh, came about. Pretty amazing thing for me. I don't know about for you. <laughs> okay, we're going to do... Yeah, I want, I want Don to, be, to do uh, somebody. Can't sleep in, in my other house. <laughs> 
I'm in the process right now of uh, working on, a, uh, on my next record, and my next record uh, is going to be uh, very unusual musically and visually again. Uh, what, what we're trying to do is, if, you know, if you've been uh, watching this show up to this point, you'll notice that these, these uh, pictures in back of me have been changing, and it's for a reason. The artist uh, is a, a very, very fine uh, 
uh, South American artist, and uh, his name is Stephen Lucero, and he's been uh, he's been adorning the cover of uh, musician. What? 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 Oh, he's Mexican. Uh, and the artist's name is uh, Stephen Lucero, and he's Mexican, and uh, he's a very strange but very, very brilliant painter, artist. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be composing music, uh, taking his paintings and his uh, titles for the paintings and working uh, the titles of his paintings into uh, the music. and. Uh, yeah, we're going to try to incorporate a bit of what you saw in Calling All Girls in the sense that I might be somehow uh, transformed into the painting and perhaps walking around or, or doing something. A magazine here in Connecticut called Musicians Monthly Magazine. Uh, they've been featuring his artwork on the cover. And uh, it's, uh, uh, if, you, if you examine it, if you have a chance to, to uh, to see this uh, this art, I think you'll agree that it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty unique stuff, and uh, we hope to finish this project in about six months from now. Currently, uh, I'm uh, I'm trying to work hand in hand with some uh, uh, some uh, friends and uh, uh, business associates at uh, different record companies. I'm trying to uh, to find uh, uh, some great talent here, and there is a lot of fantastic talent here. Right now I'm working, I found two bands that I'm currently working with. One is uh, the Dave Allen Band. It's a, a fantastic uh, a country.